Shall we all rise and begin our worship service as we look to God in prayer? We praise you, God. We praise you for your name is near. People tell of your wonderful deeds. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter things from of old, things we have heard and known. May the beginning of our worship be in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly be seated. As we worship God this morning, shall we turn to our hymn books, to hymn number 35. We'll join together in singing the hymn, hymn number 35. We shall sing the first two stanzas of this hymn. Savior, blessed Savior, listen while we sing. As we remain standing, shall we bow our heads and look to the Lord in prayer? Ye who are sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be saints, let us adore and worship our God most high and holy in everlasting remembrance of the gift of his only begotten Son for our salvation. Let us praise and honor Jesus Christ, our good Lord of inestimable love, who by his abundant grace died for us and was buried, but was raised in glory by the power of God. As such, who live by his death, let us thank and serve him during this hour of worship. And let us thank and come before him with a humble and contrite heart, remembering, however, that we have sinned and are unworthy to stand in God's holy presence let us with true penitence confess our sins. I request the congregation to kindly kneel and repeat the prayer of confession after me. O God, Father eternal and almighty, we acknowledge and confess before thy holy majesty that we are but poor sinners inclined to evil, unable to do good of ourselves. We transgress thy holy law every day in various ways 
and thus bring down upon us thy righteous judgments. But, O Lord, we regret and deplore having offended thee, and we condemn ourselves and our sins with a true repentance, taking thy mercy as our only plea. We beseech thee to have pity on us, redeem us from our misery, O God of all goodness and Father of mercies, and cleanse us from all stain for the sake of the one who is holy, even thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear then all ye who truly repent and are sorry for your sins and truly believe in Christ our Redeemer, with full purpose of amendment of heart and life, the comfortable assurance from the Holy Gospel of the remission of sin. Almighty God has mercy upon us, and through his well-beloved Son, Jesus Christ, crucified for our sins and raised from the dead for our righteousness, is pardoning all our sins. Wherefore, by the power and commandment given by Jesus Christ to his church, I declare and pronounce to you the remission of your sins. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, at the same time I warn in the name and by the commandment of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, such as may be impenitent and unbelieving, that their sins are retained, and that unless they turn and repent, the wrath of God abides upon them. Amen. Shall we all stand and offer thanks to God? Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks to all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all mankind. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, and above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for thy holy word and sacraments, and for the hope of glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Kindly be seated. We shall now have the readings from the Old Testament and New Testament scriptures. The Old Testament scripture reading for today is taken from Book of Proverbs, Chapter 20. 1 to 11. Proverbs chapter 20, 1 to 11. Wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. A king's worth is like a roar of a lion. He who angers him forfeits his life. It is to a man's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. A slugger does not plow in season, so at harvest time he looks but finds nothing. The purpose of a man's heart are deep waters, but a man of understanding draws them out. Many a man claim to have unfailing love, but a fat, faithful man who can find. A righteous man leads a blameless life. Blessed are his children after him. When a king sits on his throne to judge, he renounces all, out all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have kept my heart pure, I am clean and without sin? Differing weights and differing measures, the Lord, the Lord detests them both. Even a child is known by his action by whether his conduct is pure and right. Now we shall sing the English hymn number 212, one stanza, the first stanza.
New Testament reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, 16 to 23. Matthew, chapter 7, 16 to 23. By their fruit you will recognize them. Two people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles. Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus by their fruit you will recognize them. Not everyone who says, who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. Here ends the scripture reading for today. Shall we all rise and affirm our faith in unison by saying the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Kindly be seated. Announcements to be made. Last Sunday service offering was rupees 4,230. Wedding anniversary offering rupees 500. Epiphany service offering rupees 3,510. Wedding anniversary offering received during the Wednesday Epiphany service rupees 1,000. Birthday offering received on Wednesday Epiphany service day rupees 1,000. Holy Communion home visits off offering that was held on 7th of January, offering rupees 9,120. Holy Communion home visit offering held on Friday, 8th of January, rupees 10,050. Donation received during the visit on 8th January towards the Medical Endowment Fund, rupees 1,000. A second donation received towards the Medical Endowment Fund on the home visit on 8th of January, rupees 500. Therefore, total offering and collections for the last week, 30,910, 30,910. As announced in the earlier service, we are all aware that after the, the last Sunday of November, we were able to commence our divine worship services almost after eight months of the lockdown period. As uh, people in Mumbai, we are aware of the norms that are there and the situation of our city. So as a church, we need to continue to follow the guidelines and the standard operating procedures that are there for the divine worship services. Just to reiterate a few once again, to bring it to our notice, continue to maintain the social distancing within the premises of the church during the service and after the service also. Also requesting members to be seated in your respective seat numbers that have been allocated. <clears throat> we request you to wear the mask within the church during the service 
to avoid any kind of transmission or problem that we may face. We also request members to greet one another with a uh, Indian style of the namaste rather than uh, handshake, kindly avoid handshake. I do believe that all of you will cooperate with these guidelines and keep ourselves reminded of the same. <clears throat> the UBM Church Council is glad to announce and inform all the members that after almost a decade with the blessings and the grace of our triune God, we are able to host an ordination service for seven of our pastors and one independent candidate. We are glad to inform you that the anointed service will be held at the UBM Sushanti Church at Baikala on Sunday, that is the coming Sunday, 17th of January, 2021 at 4.30 p.m. The Bishop, Right Reverend Mohan Manoraj, the Bishop of the CSI Karnataka Southern Diocese, Mangalore, will grace the occasion. And he is also accompanied along with his wife, Srimati Prema Sarojini, and Mr. Vincent Palana, the Treasurer, CSI Karnataka Southern Diocese, Mangalore. Following are the pastors who would be receiving their ordination. Reverend Samson Balmi as Presbyter Ordination. Pastor Martha Balmi, Deaconess Ordination. Pastor Divakar, Deacon Ordination. Pastor Vasupal Dasa, Deacon Ordination. Pastor Sophia Christabel, Deacon or Deaconess Ordination. Pastor Vinod Isaac, Deacon Ordination. Pastor Freni Isaac, Deaconess Ordination, and Pastor Shashikala Alva, Deaconess Ordination. While the seven pastors are from the UBM Church Mumbai, Pastor Shashikala Alva is an independent candidate uh, who presently is with the Bible Society of India, Bangalore, and is its secretary. Kindly note that as per the protocol of the government, since the number of members to attend the worship service is restricted to 50 numbers, we are unable to invite you all to witness the ordination service physically. However, the members of all the 13 churches can watch the ordination ceremony virtually. The link of the same will be shared to all. We request all the members to kindly uphold this ordination service in your prayers. Before we receive the word of God this morning, shall we join together in singing from English hymn number 408, English hymn number 408, Preserve thy word, O Savior, to us this latter day. We'll sing the first two stanzas of this hymn. Preserve thy word, O Savior, to us this latter day, and let thy kingdom flourish, enlarge thy church, we pray.
As we remain standing, shall we bow our heads and look to God in prayer. Lord, we come before you this morning with hearts filled with gratitude and thanks to Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to fellowship and worship you. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life that you've given unto us. We thank you for the gift of the holy word that you've given unto us, that which is the spiritual manna for us that strengthens us for the perils of life to fight the spiritual battle Lord with boldness with courage knowing that the victory belongs to you and this morning Lord as we meditate on your word we want to open our hearts and minds our ears to the ministering of your holy word Speak to us, O oh Lord. Speak to us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Mm. Kindly be seated. If I may ask you the question this morning, how long are you going to live? Anybody knows the answer to this question? I'm sure that none of us know the answer. If I ask you the question, how long do you want to live? It's a different question. First question was how long you want to live. The second question is how long do you want to live? You know, sometimes when accidentally you call somebody, the person on the other side will say, I was just thinking of you, you will live for 100 years. And what would be your response? Say, nene baba, sao sal nahi chahiye. I don't want 100 years. How long will we, we uh, do I want to live? And even if I live, what would be the purpose of my life? Nanna jeevana du uddesha yenu heli, avondu prashne, mukhyavada prashne. More than how long or how much I want to live, I believe the important question is, what would be the purpose of my life? The purpose of my life. Once an interviewer along with the famous president, the people's president, APJ Abdul Kalam, after an interview, he was coming down from the third floor to the ground floor. And this interviewer was alongside the president. And he asked the question to the president, APJ Abdul Kalam and he asked him, Sir, how do you find so much of energy to do things even at this old age? So APJ quietly looked at him. He said, the, I have two purposes in my life. Number one, how to make someone else smile. Number one. Number two, how can I, how can I change my best to being much more better or my better to becoming the best simple two purposes and that is what drove him in doing so many things and uh, reaching to one of the highest positions of the nation or the largest democracy we can say in 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 the world and this morning when we look at the word of god the theme or the title of the sermon is live worthy of your calling Live worthy of your calling. And we heard both portions in scripture, Proverbs 21 to 11, and we heard Matthew 7, 16 to 23. And we see that Jesus draws the attention of the people in the Sermon on the Mount, where he's talking about a life of fruitfulness. We all know that if we would want to uh, answer that question of mine, the second question, how long do you want to live? If we knew how long, do you think life would have been a little better? Do you think? Or you would be a better person? If you knew that you're going to live maybe only till 2021, how many more days? 300 and... 55 days, 60 days, whatever. 
If you, if you knew that 31st December, 12 o'clock is your last day on this earth, do you think you would change something of yourself? Think about this thought. Think about this thought. Jesus knew the time that he is going to die. Jesus knew the purpose of his life. And when we look at the word of God this morning, we draw our attention and focus to a man who knew the definite day, uh, where, you know, may, may not be the day, but definitely that, yes, this is how I am going to end my life, but I have a purpose that I need to finish. I am running a race that at the end of it, I need to accomplish this particular purpose. And therefore, when we look into scripture, the first thing that I want to draw your attention this morning to is the verse or the word that Jesus called out to his disciples when he said, come and follow me. Three words, I believe, not only change the life of 12 people, the 12 disciples, but it had a ripple effect. The call of these three, this verse or the phrase, come follow me, changed the life of so many people, including you and me. Am I right? Because it impacted 12 people. They listened to what the call of Jesus was and they responded to that call. And Bible says that the purpose of their life changed and because of that, you and I, you know, centuries later, are part of this words or phrase, come and follow me. We are following Jesus. That call in Matthew 4, verse 19, it's, it's something that keeps on going every time we come to the saving knowledge of the grace of Jesus Christ. And what we need to look at, how can I be fruitful? Because this words from Matthew chapter 7 is such a scary verse. I don't know how many of you heard it carefully. I want you to listen to it carefully again. It says here, likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Now see the consequence. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Are you listening? A good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Isn't this scary? Clear cut. Yerade option, you either be good tree or you be a bad tree. If you are a good tree, you will bear good fruit. If you are a bad tree, you will bear bad fruit. When you go to the fruit market, you go to fruit market, yes? Even if it is corona or no corona, we want to have fruits. When you go to the fruit market, what do you do? You buy the good fruit or bad fruit? Good fruit. If you see a spot, black spot in an apple, what do you do? You will take the good fruits. You will ensure that you buy the good fruits. For what reason? So that you will be healthy, you will be strong, and more so because you pay for it. And what do you tell the person? Paisa de ke le raha, free mein thodi de raha mere ko. Iske liye achha de do mujhe. Give me something good because I'm paying for it. When Jesus is speaking about these words, he has every right and authority upon your life and upon my life to say these words that have a life which is a good life. Have a life which has a good fruit. Why? Because I have paid for it. Yes, Yesu Swami Nama Jeevna Goskara Avare Namdu He has paid the price Kraya Koti Dare through his precious blood and therefore it is important for us as we respond to this call of Jesus come 
follow me. Three, three, three words or three phases. When Jesus says, come, Yesu Swami namge kariwaga banni, three things he's doing. He gives us a direction to our life. Nama jivana ke vondu marga vannu kottane. That is why he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. A clear-cut direction and a purpose Jesus gives in our life. Number two, when Jesus asks you and me to come, he says, come from your worldly life to the kingdom life. What is he calling to? Come from the worldly life. Nimma lokadu ashedu jivanadinda nana Come to my life. And when Jesus was calling the disciples, he was calling them from their daily work that they were doing, expert fishermen. And Jesus says, you know, come follow me. I will make you fishers of men. People who are taking live fish and making them dead and having their living. Today, Jesus is saying, I am calling you to come and catch dead men and make them alive. What a change in their mission. He's calling you and me. Bible says he's calling you and me to a new direction. Number two, from the worldly things to the heavenly things. And finally, number three, he is calling you and me from death to life. Can we say that? From death to life. Jesus calls you and me. When he says, come, where is he taking us? Where is he taking us? Jesus Swami namge kariwaga yelli takol hokta iddare. He's taking us from death and he's taking us to life. Number two, when he says follow, follow andre, nanna hinde banni, nanna vatti ke banni. He's calling us to follow what? He's calling us to follow his example. His example of loving one another. His example of caring for one another. He is calling us to follow his example. Number two, he is calling us to follow the example of fulfilling the will of his heavenly father. Yesu Swami namge kariwaga follow maadi nange. You know, we play this game, follow the leader. Do you know that game? In some birthday parties we will play. And what the leader does, the leader does some funny things. The leader will do this. Everybody has to do this and then this. And the leader continues and going on and going on and going on. And do you know how the game ends? You all have played Allah, this game, follow the leader. You play. Whatever the leader says you have to do. And the game ends when one by one everybody who is not following the leader is out of the game are you with me are you understanding what is happening over here jesus says follow he's saying follow my example follow my will otherwise you're going to be out of this game the game of life we may say, or the race of life, we may say. And number three, he says, follow my word. Nana vakya vannu. Nivu dhyana maadi. Nivu adhanu. Nerave sabeku. You should follow me and follow my word, which is so very important. That Therefore, Bible very clearly says that, you know, the word is a light and a lamp to our feet. It is not just a saying for itself. But yes, it is important and vital to follow his word because only that will give us the purpose and the direction as per what God wants us to do. And number three, he says, come, come to what? Come to from death to life. Come, come to what? From your worldly life to the heavenly life. He's calling us, come, follow, follow my example. Follow the will of my father. And number three, Follow his word. And finally, to me. Yelli karita iddane, avana hattira karita iddane. He's calling us to himself. When he calls us to himself, would I want to go to Jesus? Is a question that I need to answer. Yesu Swami namge namma hattira 
Ang awa na hatrak karita idane. You know, I always share some stories of my children, and uh, you know, we play this game with my daughter now. Previously, I used to play it with Shane, and he would, you know, be there at the edge of our bed, and he. This was the game. He will come running, and I will be at a distance, and he will just jump and fly. The same game I play with my daughter now, you know, and I need to just do one thing. I just need to open my hands. Open my arms, and the child comes running. What if I move away? Where will where will he land, or where will she land? Come crashing down, full of hurt and pain, bleeding. And next time, will she come? <laughs> next time, will my child come to me? I'll say, come on. Shane Baba, Aapka Borosa nahi hai. Suddenly, you will do this, phone will come and you'll do this, and I'll be down. You know, when Jesus calls us, He calls us to Himself. How does He call us? With open arms. He says, Come, follow me. We need to know who Jesus is. He is the one who offers us his life. He is the one who has offered us redemption. He is the one who has offered us a relationship that we can know who Jesus is. As I conclude, reminding you and me this word, live worthy of your calling. Why? Because Jesus calls you and me. Come, follow me. And the one we come to, dearly beloved, is the one who has accomplished which no man on earth has accomplished. He has been able to have victory over sin and death. He has been able to have victory over all our sicknesses, diseases and our curse. And he has been able to give us victory over death and the bondage of sin. As we come to Jesus this morning, as we look at this verse which says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. The road is easy, I would say. Very clear cut. But the only challenge is that we try to tread upon it with our own strength. It would not be possible. May we ask God this morning, Lord, help my life to be worthy of your calling. Help my life to be, you know, meaningful so that I'm able to at least 1% thank you for sh uh, shedding your precious blood on the cross of Calvary for me. Amen. Shall we bow our heads and look to God in prayer? Father, we want to thank you once again for this opportunity of meditating on your word. Yes, Lord, as scripture calls us to bear fruit in our life, to bear good fruit. Lord, when we look, our, look at our own lives this morning, we may be doing so many things and we may be saying that, yes, I am a fruitful person. But this morning, Lord, help us to look deeper within our lives and know whether these fruits we are bearing is for the purpose of the kingdom of God. The kingdom that each of us desire to be in. That yes, one day when you rule in heaven and on earth, we would be part of that angelic throng, praising you, magnifying you, and worshipping you. Father, we want to thank you once again for your holy word. Help us to amend our ways according to what you want us to. Thank you for hearing us. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we conclude our service, we will join together in singing hymn number 270.
270 and as we sing this hymn we shall receive the offering 270 we shall sing required number of stanzas of this hymn have you been to jesus for the cleansing power are you washed in the blood of the lamb Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Have you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in thy grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood? Shall we offer thanks to God for the offering? Thank you, Lord, once again for your presence in our life. Thank you for all thy gifts and talents that you've given unto us. Thank you for the provisions that we receive each day. And Lord, as we bring forth this offering this morning, we pray that you would bless, cleanse, and sanctify this offering. And may this offering be used for the extension of your kingdom and glory. Lord, we remember all those who are celebrating their birthdays, wedding anniversaries and various such important occasions in their life. Lord, may your favor and blessing rest upon them. May they draw close to you and may they also grow in their spiritual walk with you. Once again, Heavenly Father, thank you for this offering and bless this offering, we pray. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Lord has commanded us to pray and intercede for one another, let us spend some time in intercession. Let us pray for the ministries of the UBM churches. Gracious Lord, we want to thank you for the church universal and in, in particular, O oh Lord, the UBM churches in Mumbai. Yes, Lord, you have been with us through the year 2020 in enabling and successfully completing various ways in which ministering to age groups across the city O oh lord children the youth the women the men bible studies intercessory prayers and in every possible way O oh lord you bless the ministry of the ubm and we want to thank you for all those who contributed in ensuring that all of these aspects were achieved and lord as we look ahead in the coming sunday for the ordination service. May you bless the service and may your presence be there, O oh Lord. We pray that every plan that is laid down would be executed in the best way, that which will bring glory and honor to your name. We pray for the candidates, O oh Lord, as you have called them to thy service and ministry. They would serve you with all their heart, and yes, Lord, in turn, they would bring many, many people to the saving knowledge and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, may you be with the bishop as he comes, bring him safely, and may this entire service have your blood covering, and your angels would protect every aspect of this divine service, O Lord. Even as we 
plan to telecast it live o master may you be there in ensuring that all the aspects of the technicalities would go on in a smooth way the entire team the technical team we surrender them also into your hands congregations response hear us o lord let us pray for our nation father god we continue to pray for our nation of india and the nations of the world especially lord we pray for mumbai father even as there is an increase in sicknesses and disease we pray lord that very soon even as the vaccine is being invented and there are possibilities of getting it at the earliest as final touches and final tests are remaining oh father we pray that when it is launched there would not be any repercussions of or any side effects that people would have or any problems that people would have but lord it would be a success and lord we we do believe that wisdom prevails from you as the scientists are working as those who are striving to get the right combination of the vaccine lord may you give them your wisdom and also lord we believe and know that protection and healing comes from you we want to trust you o father and know that you would do the best in our lives continue to protect our nation from all the snares of the evil one plans of the evil one and keep us safe under the shadow of your wings we also pray for the economy of our nation o master yes lord the last year, last year has been a very challenging year a year where people have experienced a fall in their businesses and the economy of the nation has fallen but father we believe that when we trust in you there is nothing which is impossible with you o lord may you bring an increase in the finances and resources of our nation and more so o lord may our leaders and each of us be wise in the way in which we utilize the resources and utilize the funds may you protect and bless our nation we pray congregations response hear us o lord let us remember the hour of our death succor us by thy holy angels encamped around us and keeping us in all our ways now and in the hour of our death most gracious father hear us as we humbly pray to thee in the name of our savior jesus christ congregation's response hear us o lord we pray amen shall we join together in saying the prayer that our lord has taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen receive the benediction in faith and go into the world in truth now may the god of all hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the holy spirit in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit rest abide preserve and keep each and every one of you this day and forevermore amen amen